Good day! My name is Mike Clarence M. Gosalves from 10 St. Bartholomew. Today, I'm going to show you seafloor spreading with the use of this model. First, we must prepare the following materials. Board paper or vellum board, color pencil or any coloring materials, ruler, bond paper, but I use colored paper, and a pair of scissors. When you follow the procedures on creating your model, this is what your model should look like, the platform and the paper that will represent the seafloor spreading effect. You might have guessed that it looks like a very long receipt, but in a different way. Now, we are going to combine these two to create our perfect model. This is what your model should look like. Now, it is time for us to demonstrate seafloor spreading. As you can see that there are both ends that has the words start. We will pull on the both ends of this and it will show the seafloor spreading effect. As we pull it, we can see that the stripe spreads out and creates what is called mid-ocean ridge. This is a divergent plate boundary movement. So. After we pull it, this is what your model should look like. Now, as I point out, this is the mid-ocean ridge. As what I have said earlier, this is a divergent plate boundary movement where the plates move away or apart from each other. Mid-ocean ridges is being formed in this divergent plate boundary movement. Now, the stripes represents the rocks and the minerals that is within or that came from the magma that oozes out coming from the mantle out into the oceanic crust. This creates the movement of the oceanic plate. Now, the closest rock in the mid-ocean ridge are the youngest and the freshest rock formation that was formed in the magma and as we go further and further, the furthest rock is the most dense in the ocean floor and they are formed over millions and millions of years as time pass by they go further and further away from the mid-ocean ridge i have a purpose on the color that i made my stripes in the color red represents the fresh magma that oozes out from the mantle for and comes out in the oceanic crust and as we go further and further the red is the new and young rocks, the orange represents the hardened rock, and the yellow represents the very old and very dense rocks that was formed over millions of years. When the denser rocks moves in a deep sea trench, it subducts, and as it subducts and creates tremendous friction, which melts the oceanic crust into magma and go back down into the mantle, and perhaps come back in the mid-ocean ridge as if it is being recycled. There is a force responsible for this movement. Do you know what it is? I hope you know. This is called convection current. Convection current is a force that drives the seafloor spreading. This happens when it is acting with a continental crust that have deep sea trenches and that is its common way of reacting. Again, when the oceanic crust melts, it becomes part of the mantle and it is like being recycled. And as it goes over the mid-ocean ridge again, it creates other rock formations and the stripes it represents. The oceanic crust melts when friction is applied. Tremendous amount of friction. Now, Moving on to the next part where the oceanic crust collide with the continental crust but there are no deep sea trenches. So what do you think would happen? As you can tell, when oceanic crust collide with a continental crust without a deep sea trench, it pushes the continental crust away from each other. An example of this is mid-Atlantic ridge that pushes Africa and North America away from each other. I will show you this illustration. Please look forward in the video. 
This is our mid-ocean ridge or mid-Atlantic ridge and if it pushes it this way, we can see that there are no red marks on the coast of Africa so it pushes the continental crust of Africa. It pushes it away from each other. And now in North America, the same. There are no red marks on North America and it pushes the coast away from the mid-Atlantic ridge. So that is all for the activity today. Thank you!